So when we're looking at personnel risk assessment types, we can look at individual risk. So this is where the risk is measured for the specific individual. So there's usually it's the, the, the maintenance guy or the operations guy that's out in the field uh, and they're most exposed. Then we will look at scenario risk. So here again, we can look at the frequency with which this hazardous scenario is going to occur and the consequences in terms of the potential number of fatalities or, or for a given population. And societal risk again is that where this now contributes to the societal risk, which goes beyond the fences. So of course, what we want to do is we want to minimize the, the amount of time that our plant people are in the exposed or the, the potential dangerous areas. And usually we talk about there's random and then there's planned. Of course, the random would be that Joe on the, on the, uh, the operator panel sees that there's a, a problem with one field device. So he gets on the radio and says to Stan, can you go out in the field and, and have a look at this device? That would be random versus planned, which is when we're doing uh, maintenance. So we're doing an annual shutdown or biannual shutdown, whatever. We're doing something where we now need to have people in there. And of course, how many people do we need to have in that area? So these things need to be considered, and that's part of the design process that you go through. So coming back to the good old health and safety executive in the UK, and what they came up with, they defined for plant operators and plant people, they defined a boundary between one fatality every thousand years down to one fatality every million years. And for the public, it's an order of magnitude better. So it would be one fatality every 10,000 years down to one fatality every million years. And that region is known as the ALARP region. So here again, when companies are looking to define their risk tolerance, they need to consider ALARP. Now, most of the companies I talk to here in the US either have 10 to the minus 5, in other words, one fatality every 100,000 years, or 10 to the minus 4, one fatality every 10,000 years. So whatever tolerable risk you define has to be within the ALARP boundaries. I did have one client that had 10 to the minus 3, and the reason they had 10 to the minus 3 is because the installation was, was unmanned and, and there was only somebody going in there once or twice a year to do routine maintenance. So it wasn't manned 24-7, 365. So this is ALARP, as you can see. 10 to the minus 3 down to 10 to the minus 6 for plant workers and 10 to the minus 4 to 10 to the minus 6 for the public. So most companies will define their tolerable risk based upon ALARP requirements. Because again, what you have to understand is, as of today, we are following 1511, and 1511 is known as RAGAGAP. Here's another nice acronym for you. RAGAGAP. Recognized and generally accepted good engineering practice. Some people call it best practice, but RAGAGAP. And 1511 is recognized as being RAGAGAP. So if you're following RAGAGAP, you're following the best that you can as of today. Will it prevent you from ever having an accident? There's no guarantee in that. But what it will do is it will minimize the likelihood of you having a major accident. So RAGAGAP is very important. And now, if you come under OSHA, PSM requirements in the US, OSHA says that if you've got 10,000 pounds or more of hazardous, toxic, etc. type material or chemicals on site, then you have to follow process safety management. And OSHA, because somebody said to me, well, OSHA doesn't say you have to do 1511. No, it doesn't. But what it says is you have to follow RAGAGAP. So, 1511 is one type of RAGAGAP that is 
commonly used and accepted by industry. The old S84 is now ISA 61511 because the two are now virtually the same. So the ISA in 2017 voted to change the name of the S84 <coughs> to follow 1511. So these are Ragagap. If you're following Ragagap, that's the best you can do. So what do we do then? We start with our inherent process risk, which is the risk posed by our operations. And <coughs> there's a, it's the combination again of our likelihood of the occurrence and the severity of that, which would cause harm. And this is defined in the ISO guide uh, 51, 1990. So the inherent risk is the risk from a completed process design that contains materials at normal process parameters, which will be temperature and pressure, etc. So that's our inherent risk. What is posed by our process under normal operation? <laughs>